Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, what's more interesting than the new iRiver Story HD ebook reader? Well, what's inside of it? That's what. You know what we say here on the EEV blog? Don't turn it on, take it apart. Let's see if we can take this sucker apart, shall we? What have we got on the back here? Well, it was uh, fairly obvious from the start that there's a couple of Phillips head screws under the SD card cover there. So uh, I'm not sure, I'm gonna assume that they're part of it. And these feet uh, down here are a dead giveaway. And they certainly pop out as you expect. And there's another Phillips head screwdriver in there. So let's take those four screws out. Uh, I expect there to possibly this uh, end might have to uh, pry open with a spudger bar or something like that, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, this looks very promising. I just pried that open with my spudger and uh, sure enough, there's a little plastic uh, side clip. So I expect there to be uh, those similar sort of side clips all the way around the side, just like on the Kindle. And sure enough, we have three of them along the bottom edge like that. Let's try and find the others on the side and the top end. And we've got no less than five at the top end here. One, two, three, four, five. And the sides are a bit harder to get out, but there's one, two, three, four there on the right hand side and the left hand side we've got one two three four five six and yeah the sides are just a little bit tighter but uh if we open it up bingo it just pops open like that let's take a look inside it's not nearly as interesting really as the kindle but that's uh, to be expected it's a bit less uh feature pack but it's got all the basic stuff you would expect it's got the large lithium ion battery here we'll take a look at the pcb we'll take a look at in detail it's a single sided uh load that gets their manufacturing cost down there's the membrane over here which goes to the um to the e-ink display there's another membrane which goes over to the keypad on the front the back panel nothing's happening there and no there there is no RFID tag uh, built in to that at all. The main uh, PCB is is pretty much um, it. There's an antenna that uh, runs, that's your Wi-Fi antenna up there. We'll take a look in more detail. The switch down here, nothing really happening uh, there at all. That is, that's just uh, boring as it just slides across. The uh, spring itself is built in to the slide switch down here on the main board so uh, you can still operate uh, the unit when the back covers off no problems at all one curious thing is the large amount of free space around here and because the battery is not really uh, held in with anything not really contained with anything there it's just sort of uh, double stuck down with double-sided tape I'm assuming um, I can't see any reason why you couldn't replace that with a uh, larger one and um, of the same uh, uh, type, of course, so that the battery charging technology is compatible. Um, but if you've got the same uh, type and you actually uh, hacked out, actually uh, dremeled out these, um, these walls here in the back case, you could actually fit a larger capacity battery in there, I think. No surprises with the battery at all. It's a uh, 3.7 volt lithium ion, nominal 6.7 uh, watt hour or 1800 milliamp hours and the tape over the end like this is a dead giveaway that they've actually got uh, built-in protection circuitry into the battery uh, that's a must-have in uh, consumer devices like this with a fairly large capacity I mean 6.7 watt hours is a fairly large capacity battery so if we actually peeled back that tape we'd see the protection circuitry in there let's take a look at the main board up close and of course sitting right in the middle is the um, Freescale IMX 508 uh, Cortex arm processor, quite a powerful uh, low power beast, very common in uh, these ebook uh, readers and other uh, low power products like that. This device here is the 2 gigabyte uh, NAND flash memory. It's a Samsung KLM 2G 1D EHE 
device. There's another Samsung device up here, presumably another uh, flash memory. It's a K4X 1G323 from what I can see. Um, I don't know what that one is offhand. Down here we've got another Freescale part and it is an uh, MC13892 and it's a PMU, a power management unit. It's got all sorts of stuff built in it. it uh, it's, it's a companion device to the um, ARM Cortex processor up there. It's got built-in battery charging. It's got cool ohm counting for knowing how much uh, battery you've got left. It's got a real-time clock and a whole bunch of DC to DC converters and voltage regulators to power the cores inside the processor and things like that. So it's a, it's a very essential uh, chip and as you can see there's a lot of um, analog stuff surrounding that. We've got the mini B USB connector here. There's a small cutout in the board for that. Uh, there's another small device over here. I'm not actually sure what that is. Probably unimportant. Now curiously there is a spare connector here, a flat flex connector, and uh, they haven't populated that part. So I'm not sure what the deal was there. In fact there's quite a lot of unpopulated footprints all around here. Quite a lot indeed. I'm not actually sure what the deal is there. Now here's the main flat flex connector over on this side which goes down to the uh, keypad, the front panel uh, QWERTY keypad. If we look up the top here we've got the Wi-Fi chipset. No surprises and uh, Etheros, um, I think it's an AR61026, that's what I'm reading on there. Um, it, I think they used a sim very uh, similar one or they used the same brand one in the Kindle, no surprises at all and uh, they're using a uh, little micro UFL coax connector to go up to the Wi-Fi antenna which uh, just sits in its own little thing there. That's just a little uh, strip of um, circuit board, little PCB mount uh, antenna. Very common. And around the Freescale processor up here, um, and quite a few unpopulated parts as well. There's the main uh, crystal oscillator. And uh, there are a few uh, test points as well. There, there you go, those gold uh, pads in there. They're labelled as uh, test points, but of course uh, they're highly likely to be um, access points for the JTAG and things like that, because they have to uh, program these devices once they're in there. So, um, but I don't see any labelling for that or any sort of um, easy access uh, JTAG, JTAG connector for uh, hacking. And up in the top left corner here, we've got our e-ink display controller. Now I believe it's an Epson. Um, I'm reading a TP365 180 but don't uh, quote me on that. Uh, very unsurprising. Epson make a lot of uh, e-ink uh, e display controllers. Um, I believe they use one in the Kindle as well. And of course we've got our flat flex uh, PCB here as well. There's a couple of decoupling capacitors on there and you'll notice that the uh, that it's actually got a designed date um, just before Christmas 2010. So there you go. So there you have it. That's it. Uh, pretty basic. It's got uh, nothing more than uh, what I expected. No um, bells and whistles at all. But uh, it's, it's reasonably well made. I have no problems with it whatsoever. The, the, predominant, uh, the components are predominantly um, 0402. Uh, they haven't gone any smaller than that. Uh, they could have even gone for 0603 if they wanted to. to uh, possibly uh, increase their manufacturing yield, but uh, these sort of, you know, 0402 is no problem these days. So really, it's uh, uh, not a bad uh, design whatsoever. The layout is quite good. You can see they've actually panelized it down here. They've got the cutouts, um, well, the uh, actual breakout um, tabs for the panelization of the board. Why they've actually uh, done a cutout there and shaped it like that, uh, your guess is as good as mine. And I don't see any uh, reset switch on here either. And you really have to wonder what happens when you disconnect the battery. Well, there's only one way to find out. And it's disconnected. And of course the uh, display is still there. It's still going because it's an e-ink display. It doesn't need any power to retain the last image. So I'll leave that for a little bit. And uh, there's no major capacitance on the board. So it should have already, it shouldn't have uh, held a charge really at all and I'll reconnect that and see um, if it boots up from scratch. Yep, there we go. We've, uh, it's reset itself. I plugged it back in and it looks like it's just going into that reboot process. And it's booting up. There we go. And yep, we're back in. We haven't lost anything. Everything seems sweet.
no problems whatsoever. Hack away. And just like the Kindle, I was able to actually reset the thing without removing the battery, but just by holding down the power switch for uh, 10 seconds and then turning it on. And that uh, puts it into a cold reset exactly like you've taken out the battery, presumably. Taking out the PCB was pretty easy, just uh, half a dozen screws or so, and it just uh, lifts out and we can take a look at the hinged switch mechanism here. It's not terribly uh, exciting, not much to write home about, but... Um, there you go, that's the swing mechanism it's built in. And if we bring the PCB in over here, we can see that the there's the um, tactile switches on the bottom of the board there. So they're just too standard, uh, like a, I think they're a Panasonic uh, brand one, if um, memory serves me correctly. And they're just a little tiny uh, membrane um, dome type one so there you go a pretty basic uh, switch implementation um i don't know how many um how many presses they're actually uh, rated for but i assume they're uh, quite significant they wouldn't have used one that only had like uh, ten thousand cycles or something like that i'm sure they would have uh, chosen uh, some uh, tactile domes and switches that had in the order of millions of uh, uh switch actuation and there's a few interesting uh, labeled test points on this board they've got uh, all the various uh, power supply voltages you can see there 3.3 and 1.8 uh, for the Wi-Fi and uh, over here there's a couple of interesting ones boot mode 0 and boot mode 1 I'm not sure what they do but uh, if you want to have a play around with those that would be uh, interesting and uh, there's a power key, there's uh, digital 1.2 supplies, there's various uh, supplies in this um, on this board for the uh, processor and the various chipsets. But unlike the Kindle, which had its uh, easy access serial uh, connector on the side of the case, which allowed you to access uh, the boot ROM of the system, allowed you to access the actual command kernel of the thing, I can't uh, find any equivalent um serial uh serial monitor type uh interface on this board there may be one there labeled as one of the test points but yeah it doesn't look um as easy to hack as the kindle was and a few extra screws gets the uh back plate panel out and we can access the uh keypad and the lcd itself and nothing uh, really surprising there in terms of the uh key switch um uh, overlay there pretty pretty basic uh, stuff and if we have a look at the LCD itself up here we can see you can see my boom mic there in the uh, in the reflection on the mirrored finish on the back there we can uh, see the membrane going into the uh, LCD uh, the e-ink sorry e-ink uh, panel display which is made by LG um, and up the top, you can actually see the uh, the chip on board drivers there. You can actually see them embedded into the actual panel itself. And they're those tiny little. They're they're actually uh, they're actually silicon chips embedded in the panel itself, which uh, drives. They actually drive all the individual rows and columns of the e ink display it's a rather fascinating uh, construction these things but uh, ultimately there's uh, there's not much to them at all it's uh, very um, typical of a standard um, row column LCD dot matrix uh, driver system really And we have a bare PCB manufacturing date of the 20th week 11 here for my particular unit. Well, that's it for the teardown. I hope you found it interesting. And uh, if you want to see the high-res uh, photos of this, go on over to my uh, Flickr account. Uh, the link's on my blog website. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, thumbs up, comment, video response, whatever. Thanks. See you next time.